All right, we might get underway. Um, wonderful to get people together for a talk, an opportunity uh, to introduce uh, Associate Professor Alex Edelman, who is Senior Researcher and Program Lead, working with us towards the establishment of the, UC, of the Centre for Health and Other Complex Systems Research. Um, Alex has worked in Northern Australia around areas with both hospital systems and community controlled services around sort of primary care and health systems approach to, to quality health system improvement um, and also has a strong background working with WHO and partners also with a focus on sort of um, primary system, healthcare systems uh, approaches to work. Um, it's great to have her on board. Um, and I think she's um, talking with many of you about um, potential areas for work. I'll turn over to Alex. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, everyone. Uh, it's just amazing to be here. Um, I feel so privileged um, to, to be um, with everyone today. Um, and to, to have also joined Menzies um, and to be working with all of you and also uh, so cross-divisionally um, and closely with Professor Alan Cass and also closely with Professor John Wakeman uh, in taking forward this initiative of the Centre for Health and Other Complex Systems Research here at Menzies. Um, and so this presentation is really uh, an opportunity for me to introduce myself as the research and program lead for the centre. Uh, to talk about some relevant research and projects that I've been involved in um, and, and to also talk a bit about the centre itself um, and to reflect some thinking and ideas emerging from conceptual work on how the centre might strengthen opportunities uh, for, for multi-sectoral research and uh, collaboration, how we can strengthen those things in our region. Uh, so discussions about the scope and the potential for the centre um, have already been happening uh, and and so, you know, these, these discussions precede me um, and, and they've been led by Menzies research leaders and with some health service partners. Uh, and so going forward, I'm really keen to also hear your thoughts and ideas on the centre. So please come and chat with me and send me an email. Um, I'm based in Townsville, but I'll be travelling regularly to Alice Springs um, and also here to Darwin. Uh, so I'd like to begin the presentation by acknowledging the traditional owners the Larrakia peoples as the traditional owners of the land, the Darwin region on which we're meeting. Um, and I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present and also to our emerging and future community leaders. Um, and so I think it's important here to make note that it's National Reconciliation Week. Um, and I think this is a particularly important time uh, to talk and reflect on our shared histories, cultures, goals and achievements, um, and to also reflect on our own contributions to achieving reconciliation in the places where we live. Um, so I just wanna pause here to talk a bit about place for a moment because place is really fundamental to the Center for Health and Other Complex Systems Research. Uh, and this is because the focus of the center is on having practice and policy impact through research and evaluation. Uh, and this really can only be done in partnership with government, community, other non-government and private sector organisations who are work, working locally in the Northern Territory, in rural and remote Australia, in Northern Australia, and also in the Asia Pacific region. And so these are the broad geographic regions on which the centre will be focused um, with the hub of the centre being in remote central Australia in Aranda country. So I thought it might be relevant to note in this presentation um, that I have a history and connection um, with different places in rural and remote Australia. Um, so I grew up in the Kimberley region of, of WA in Kananara and Broome, uh, which is Nirrawong and Yaru country. Um, and I've got good memories of adventures in very remote locations in Northern Territory uh, and in Northern WA. Um, so I've got great memories of people too. Um, and, and this includes a connection with the Aboriginal community controlled health service community, which felt to me very much like a community as I was growing up, like a family, actually, as I was growing up. Um, so I completed most of my schooling in uh, Kananara District High School, um, Broome Primary, Broome Senior High, and then went on to study in Melbourne. And so my academic background is in global development, public policy and management, public health, legal studies with a health systems PhD. 
So around 14 or 15 years ago, uh, my husband and I moved to Townsville, which is Bindal and Wulgarukuba country. Um, and this is where we've raised and continue to raise our three daughters, Lucy, Rosalie and Helena. Um, and so I've worked across Northern Queensland in policy management and research roles uh, with a focus on rural and remote health workforce development, health system governance and knowledge translation. And so with this background, I've engaged quite, quite closely over the years with the Northern Australia development agenda, uh, and particularly with the health focused elements of that from a base at JCU. And one of the projects I was involved in as a researcher and project manager was the CRCNA funded health service delivery situational analysis for Northern Australia. And this, this was a piece of work led out of JCU um, with partners across the North. Um, and so the aim of this work was to identify strategic long-term uh, development and growth opportunities for the health sector in, no in the North towards a goal of improving health and prosperity. So I just want to provide a quick overview of this project uh, and some summary findings, um, as I think it provides a helpful overview of some of the key service delivery strengths and challenges in our region that I think are relevant to the new centre. So the work was conducted pre-COVID uh, in the latter part of 2019, um, and it involved a comprehensive document review, a costing study, and also around 16 in-person stakeholder consultations across Northern Australia in these locations. Uh, and we use the six WHO health system building blocks framework to structure our data collection and analysis. And so these are service delivery, health workforce, health information systems, access to essential medicines and te technologies, financing, leadership and governance. And we added, uh, as is sometimes done internationally when using the building, blo building blocks framework, um, a seventh uh, category of community engagement. And this is just to capture and, and describe community focused issues. So these, the, the WHO building blocks, as you know, are interconnected components that contribute to the functioning of health systems. So we also collated some background health statistics to describe uh, our context. Um, and so I wanted to share this Australian Institute of Health, Where, health and Welfare chart showing the number of potentially avoidable deaths per 100,000 people in the four Northern Australian PHN regions between, between 2014 and 2016. And so this, of course, just illustrates the health inequity in the North, um, with the figure showing much higher rates of potentially avoidable deaths in Northern Australia, uh, compared with the av Australian average shown in green. So of the four regions, the Northern Territory and the Western Queensland PHNs report the highest rates. And so these poorer health outcomes largely reflect ongoing health disparities between Aboriginal peoples and non-Indigenous Australians, which in turn reflect persisting inequities, across many areas relating to the social determinants of health. So against this backdrop, uh, in the situational anal analysis, we looked at key strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, opportunities and threats characterising health service delivery and planning in the North. And so this slide shows some of the key health service delivery strengths and weaknesses. Um, in summary, we're pretty good across the North at, uh, through necessity at training a fit for purpose health workforce trained to do the right things in the right places and in our contexts. And we're getting better at using telehealth and other e-health technologies to facilitate access to care. Another key strength, strength was the many examples we found of culturally safe health service models and particularly those delivered in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community controlled health services. Uh, and weaknesses include ongoing health workforce shortages and high turnover. Uh, and our health systems are also generating inefficiencies through siloed planning and financing. We're also not linking up care right across the patient journey, and we're not working well enough with communities in local co-design and planning for health service delivery. And all of this against a backdrop of under-resourcing, particularly of comprehensive primary health care and critical prevention services and supportive infrastructure. Opportunities include, of course, strengthening workforce, recruitment and support and retention. Um, and there are also opportunities to review financing mechanisms for healthcare, especially to reward quality of care and outcomes rather than just activity. Um, and as well, there are opportunities to support locally led needs-based planning and to respond to the social, cultural and environmental determinants of health through cross-sectoral policy and action. So I think it's important to note as well that while this project example is about Northern Australia, many of these health service delivery challenges and opportunities that I've mentioned apply right across rural and remote Australia against this really terrible picture of decreasing health outcomes by level of remoteness. And so research and evaluation have a really important role to play in generating evidence to support our shared efforts uh, to improve health and wellbeing. 
And so noting this in the situational analysis project, we also looked at research investments between 2015 to 2019 and found that the proportion of funding received by Northern institutions and to health needs contextualised for Northern Australia is well below what would, would, would be expected given Northern Australia's population size, which is around 5% of the Australian population. Um, it's high disease burden and also proximity to the Asia Pacific region. And so the figure here shows the proportion of ARC and NHMRC grant funding received by Northern Australian administering institutions by research type. Uh, and it shows that around 60% of the funding was for projects classified by, by us, the research team, uh, as being biomedical or clinical research, which includes preclinical studies and research, research on or for the treatment of patients. Um, around 30% of the funding was for projects in the category of social, cultural, environmental and population, population health research, which were largely focused on addressing risk factors for disease among northern population groups and studies describing epidemiological trends. Uh, and the smallest proportion of funding, only around 11%, was for projects in the category of health services research, which includes studies focused on efficiency and effectiveness of the healthcare system. Uh, and this highlighted for us potential underinvestment in policy focused evaluative research to support health system strengthening in the North. Um, and so this kind of research involves designing, implementing and evaluating health service and workforce models, examining health system financing and governance issues, and place-based planning and co-design approaches supporting health service delivery and related policy. So I've presented on an example uh, of a Northern Australian health systems project that I've been involved in relevant to the new centre. Uh, and so I'm, now I'll turn to our border place within the very proximate Asia Pacific region to provide an example of an international health systems project that I'm also involved in, which is also relevant. So the project is being led by the WHO Alliance for Health Policy and Systems Research, together with WHO regional officers. Uh, and it examines primary healthcare in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic um, across around 50 countries um, worldwide, including many in our Asia Pacific region. So in the project, we're examining primary healthcare using the Astana PHC framework, which has three key components, integrated health services, uh, with an emphasis on primary care and essential public health functions, multi-sectoral policy and action, and empowered people and communities. And so this map just shows the 48 participating countries in, in the current uh, PhD in COVID-19 case studies project across the six WHO regions. And so my role as a consultant in this work involves coordinating review and production of the case studies which are being led by in-country research teams uh, and developing regional and global level syntheses of the findings. And so this is a body of work that's growing with huge potential for next steps in the form of regional and country level policy dialogues and action plans for primary health care reform. Uh, and so I hope that consultancy work in these areas with WHO and similar international humanitarian and development partners will build through the Centre for Health and other complex systems research. And I'm keen to develop teams and capacity around this. So I'll just now take you through briefly some preliminary global level findings from the synthesis work against one of the Astana PHC components, which I think highlights commonalities in health system challenges with what we see here uh, and the great potential for us to work together in our region uh, to find solutions. Um, so I'll share findings relating to the integrated health services um, component with an emphasis on primary care and essential public health functions. Uh, so nearly all the case studies highlighted the immense challenges faced by governments in maintaining essential pu uh, public health and primary care services during the COVID-19 response, uh, with attention and investment, especially health workforce or human resources for health investment, diverted away from usual care and services. Some countries were able to implement strategies to maintain service continuity during the heightened response periods, but, but others were not able to do so. Uh, within this context, several case studies described the introduction of remote models of care, such as to enable access to medicines and, and leveraging technology to enable virtual consultations. And so while these were reported to have facilitated access to some essential services, the impact of the technology was mixed and there was variation between the countries in terms of what was implemented and how it affected primary care access. Multiple workforce challenges were also described, including lack of surge workforce capacity to support the response efforts uh, and urban slash rural health workforce maldistribution, which especially affected primary care service delivery and response efforts outside of urban centres. 
And in many case studies, the work of community health workers or volunteer health workers at the local level was really pivotal in maintaining public trust in government services and facilitating primary care access um, and also implementing uh, response measures. So of course, Menzies has a strong body of existing health services and systems research work happening across a range of areas uh, across the divisions. And this includes the Centre for Research Excellence for Strengthening Health Systems in Remote Australia, CRESTRA, led by Professor John Wakeman and with really accomplished co-investigator teams across the organisation and with partners. So what the Centre for Health and Other Complex Systems Research aims to offer in Menzies is a way to coordinate and strengthen across the divisions and with our partners, this kind of research uh, and investments in it. And Crestra in particular is likely to provide a key platform for, the, for current and future work in the Centre for Health and Other Complex Systems Research. So as a researcher myself, I also just wanted to provide an example of some health systems research questions that I'm particularly interested in. Uh, and these are reflected in this agenda for future research on primary healthcare implementation. Uh, as put forward by colleagues in, the, in a recent scoping review. So the health systems research questions it poses include, what does people-centered comprehensive primary healthcare that incorporates public health and equity principles look like? <coughs> what incentives and sanctions do we need to achieve this vision? What tools and guidance do we have to support the necessary multi-sectoral collaboration and action? What mechanisms of accountability do we need to underpin effective governance for primary healthcare? What multidisciplinary and innovative workforce models do we need and how do we implement these? What payment systems enable quality of care and access? So what works for whom and how? How can we reorient models of care to improve healthcare access and provide continuity across the patient journey? And relating to research, the research endeavors themselves, how can we effectively engage in research co-production with end users, including the community? So what are the key mechanisms of engagement? And how can we improve the receptiveness of policymakers to emerging evidence? And finally, how can we improve the collection, reporting, monitoring and communication of data to support our research and evaluation efforts? And so within this, I'm particularly interested in the questions about health system governance, accountability and knowledge translation. So the centre is likely to have two streams framing its work, one on health systems research and evaluation and one that brings explicit attention to cross-sectoral work focused on the broader determinants of health and well-being. Uh, and the centre will also likely have cross-cutting elements to emphasise a focus on knowledge translation to support evidence-informed policy and practice to meet health needs in our region. Another cross-cutting theme will likely be, be around capacity building with partners to strengthen research and evaluation capacity and capabilities across the health system and other sectors. And so in thinking about the scope, what's in scope for the centre, I've talked about geographic scope broadly, uh, and also broad themes, and also the notion that the centre will build on a platform of existing bodies of work and strengths in Menzies. But I just wanna talk a little bit more about these themes in a conceptual sense. So, so what do we mean by health systems research? And so I find this figure to be uh, quite, a, quite useful in thinking through some of the conceptual boundaries. So health systems research, is of course a field within the larger domain of health research. Um, and so the blue circle of health systems research includes micro and meso level health services focused research that might address specific healthcare delivery issues at individual, local and organisational levels, while macro level health systems research might address, might address issues at a national or international level with a focus on laws and regulations shaping healthcare organisation and delivery, professional networks and their role, decision-making structures for health and societal values and cultures that might shape how decisions are made and how services are structured and delivered. And relating to the second key theme, multi-sectoral research and evaluation focused on the social determinants of health, here's another conceptual framework that I think helps to illustrate the key elements of this concept. So this framework was published by the, uh, in 2008 by the WHO Commission on the Social Determinants of Health and I think um, this helpfully distinguishes between the more distal uh, structural determinants, including socioeconomic and political factors, and more proximate intermediary determinants, including the material circumstances in which people live, work and age, as well as biological factors, psychosocial factors. And of course, this includes the role of the health system itself as a determinant of health. 
So all of these factors impact on equity in health and wellbeing, and it highlights why a complex systems framing is important because to improve health equity, we need to look at multiple levels, multiple interacting agents, and complex interrelationships to understand what we should invest in to improve health and wellbeing. So here are some next steps and a timeline in thinking about the establishment of the centre. Um, and so May to June uh, it has largely been about and continues to be about uh, early engagement and priority setting. Um, and this involves meetings with key stakeholders, both internal to the organisation and external, uh, to define key needs, ideas and priorities for improving health systems and the, and the role of research and evaluation as part of that. Uh, and this, of course, builds from previous discussions and feedback and the existing strong foundation of health systems research in Menzies. From July, uh, we hope to set some operational foundations, including a governance, governance structure and a resourcing strategy, as well as detailed stakeholder engagement plan to guide our uh, relationships with stakeholders and ensure that we're working in partnership to address health and health service needs and priorities. And in parallel, we'll be working to support and develop some existing programs of work, working closely with our partner clients and other stakeholders. Uh, and so key outputs from the centre ongoing will reflect both existing and new work and will include concept, concept papers and proposals that build on or extend relevant work, new proposals that meet evaluation and capacity development needs of stakeholders, as well as practical contributions, contributions to health system reform, including policy briefs, technical papers and evaluation reports. That's it from me. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to present today. Um, I'd be delighted to take questions um, and of course, looking forward to meeting all of you and talking further about these ideas. Thanks very much.